So how can we solve this problem? An imaginary cylinder with radius 0.35 meters and length 1.5 meters has an infinite line of charge with a linear charge density of 75 nanocoulombs per meter. What is the total charge enclosed by the Gaussian cylinder? So first, let's draw a picture. So let's say if we have an infinite uh, long line of charge, and we're going to surround it with a cylinder. So this line of charge has a net positive charge. We have the linear charge density. So we know lambda is 75 nanoclooms per meter. We have the radius of the cylinder, that's r. And the length of the cylinder, we'll call it l. So now let's focus on part A. What is the total charge enclosed by the Gaussian cylinder? Well, we know that lambda represents the linear charge density, which is the charge divided by the length. So to find the charge enclosed by the cylinder, we can rearrange the equation, multiplying both sides by L. So it's lambda times L. So Q is going to be 75 nanocoulombs, which is 10 to the negative 9, coulombs per meter times the length of the line of charge that is in the cylinder, which is basically the length of the cylinder, and that is uh, 1.5 meters. So keep in mind, this line goes on forever, but we're only concerned about the portion of that line that is enclosed by the Gaussian cylinder. We can see the units and meters will cancel. And let's get a calculator and type this in. So the total charge enclosed by the cylinder, I'm not sure what just happened here, it's equal to 1.125 times 10 to the minus 7 coulombs. So this is the answer to part A. Now what about part B? What is the electric flux through the cylinder due to the infinite line of charge? Feel free to pause the video and work on that example. So what equation can we use to calculate the electric flux? You can find the electric flux two ways. The first way is if you know the electric field and the area. The electric flux is the product of the electric field that is perpendicular to the area or the surface that it's uh, passing through. If the electric field is not perpendicular to the uh, to the area, to the surface, then you need to use this equation. It's E cosine phi times A. So if you know the electric field, and if you know the area, and if it's not perpendicular, if you know the angle as well, you can calculate the electric flux that way. But we don't know what the electric field is. In fact, we want to find it in part C. So we can't really use this equation. We need to use something else. The other way in which you can calculate the electric flux is using Gauss's law. Gauss's law states that the total electric flux that enters or exits, let's say, a Gaussian surface is equal to the total charge enclosed by that surface divided by epsilon sub naught. So it's proportional to the total charge inside the surface. We have the total charge, and epsilon sub naught is a constant. So we can use that to calculate the electric flux that passes through the surface. By the way, the electric flux that passes through the cylinder, is it an inward electric flux or an outward electric flux? What would you say? Now, because, um, because the cylinder encloses a positive charge, it's an outward electric flux. The electric field emanates outward in all directions from the center. 
so therefore the electric flux should be positive. If the charge was negative on the inside, then the electric field will enter into the surface, making the electric flux negative. So let's go ahead and calculate the electric flux. The total charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface is 1.125 times 10 to the minus 7 coulombs. And let's divide it by epsilon sub naught, which is a constant, and that's 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. So I'm going to put this Q value somewhere here. Let's just rewrite it in this area so I can have some more space to work with. So let's divide those two numbers. So the total electric flux that leaves the cylinder is equal to 12,712 newtons per newtons times square meters per coulombs. So that's the unit for the electric flux. And it's positive because it's an outward electric flux. So that's all you got to do for part B. That's how you can find it. Now what about part C? Calculate the electric field at a point 0.3 meters away from the infinite line of charge. So what we're going to do is we're going to derive the formula for the electric field from an infinite line of charge using Gauss's law. And then we're going to use that formula to get the answer. So let's begin with this form of Gauss's law. The electric flux is equal to the total charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface divided by epsilon sub naught. Now the electric field that emanates from the line of charge is perpendicular to the surface. So it forms a 90 degree angle with the surface. But relative to the normal line, let's say this is the normal line to the surface, the electric field is parallel to the normal line which means that the angle phi is equal to zero. Keep in mind the electric flux is Ea times cosine of the angle that's between the normal line, which is perpendicular to the surface, and the electric field. But cosine zero is one, so we don't need the cosine part in this equation. Now we said that Q is equal to the linear charge density times the length of the Gaussian cylinder. So let's go ahead and replace Q with lambda times L. Now what do you think we need to do at this point? What would you do in this part of the process? So what about A? What is the area of the cylinder in which the electric field passes through? Now first you need to realize that the total surface area of the cylinder is equal to 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r times h, the height of the cylinder, in which case the height of the cylinder is L in this particular problem. Now pi r squared, that is the area of a circle. The cylinder has a top circle and a circle on the bottom. So pi r squared plus pi r squared is 2 pi r squared. So that's the area of the top and the bottom circle. The area of the top and the bottom is also known as the area of the base. The lateral area is 2 pi r l. The lateral area is the area around the cylinder, the area that does include the top and the bottom circle. Now which area do we need, the lateral area or the area of the base, the top and the bottom part of the circles? Which one would you say? Well, let's look at the electric field at the top surface. The electric field emanates away from the line of charge. And notice that the normal line relative to this circle here, it's vertical, whereas the electric field is in the x direction. The angle between the normal line indicated in yellow and the electric field in blue is 90. And cosine 90 is 0. So therefore the electric flux through that surface is 0 which means we can't really use that. There's no 
electric field vector that passes through the top circle and the bottom circle. So that area is insignificant in this problem. We don't want to use it. So keep this in mind. The electric flux is at a maximum whenever the electric field is perpendicular to the surface. The electric flux is at a minimum, or it's equal to zero, if the electric field is parallel to the plane of the surface, which that's the case for the top and bottom part of the cylinder. So we need to use the lateral area, 2 pi RL. So let's go ahead and replace A with 2 pi RL. So this is going to be E times 2 pi RL, which is equal to lambda times L over epsilon sub naught. So we can divide both sides by L. Next, let's divide both sides by 2 pi R. So if we do that, the electric field is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi R epsilon sub naught, which is the equation for the electric field given an infinite line of charge. So let's go ahead and answer the last part of the problem. So lambda is 75 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs per meter, and we want to calculate the electric field at a distance 3 meters away from the infinite line of charge. So r is 3. And epsilon sub naught, 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. So let's go ahead and plug in uh, the values that we have. So what I got is 450, rounded to the nearest whole number, newtons per coulomb. So that is the electric field 3 meters away from the center, from the line of charge.